Nation, we are live. Happy Monday. Monday is my mentoring day. I spend the day mentoring my team. It's been all day Zoom calls and a little bit of Hangouts messaging, but mostly Zoom calls. And I don't know, I like having one day per week where all I have to do, all I have to worry about is being there for my team, uh, helping them grow. Some people I meet once a week, some people I meet once a, a month, and some people I meet once a quarter, depending on the projects they're working on and how uh, close I guess they are to the work that I'm doing right now. So I like having that one day per week. I don't have to worry about making videos. I don't have to worry about writing books. I don't have to worry about doing interviews. All I have to worry about is mentoring the people on my team. So that was today. That is today. And after this, I'm doing more mentoring for my team. But this is the break. This is my break. And I'm going to spend some time chat with you guys, answering your questions, trying to bring as much value as possible. Zan the Man Smith in the house says, happy Monday. I read reward. I read wards. Happy Monday. Um, wealth. Re- wealth. I step says, hey, love your books. Amazing. Appreciate the love. Glad it's helping. Welcome, Laura. Welcome. Uh, Zan the Man says, Tuesday's YouTube day. Tuesday's YouTube day. Yeah. So Monday's mentoring day. Tomorrow's YouTube day. Tomorrow is going to be a little different because I'm also doing a master class for this group. Um, on the weekend, I was I was speaking in South Africa <laughs> to uh, the Real Entrepreneur Summit team, and there was it was me, it was Deepak Chopra, it was Damon John, it was a whole bunch of a whole bunch of different people, and they asked me to come back and do a master class on how to get out of your nine to five, so you can turn your message, your ideas, your thoughts into a business. So tomorrow, in addition to making videos, I'm, I'm also doing this masterclass. So it's going to be, it's going to be pretty fun. It's one of, I mean, what I love the most is taking entrepreneurs who, who are heart centric, who want to make a difference and giving them the tools, uh, the strategies and the motivation, the belief to go off and actually do it. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be excited. I don't know how many people, they said a thousand people, something signed up already for it. So it's going to be a pretty, Pretty crazy masterclass. Um, I'm excited. Anyway, I'm nervous. I'm excited. We're going to go make it happen. Okay, what else? What do you guys got? Pop some questions down below. We'll do my best to answer as many as possible. Uh, Schuston is asking, how do I gain access to Clubhouse? You need to be invited. You need to have an iPhone or an iPad, and you need to be invited. Uh, I forget who invited me in. Um, who invited me in? I'm blanking. I can see her face, but I'm blanking on her name right now for some reason. Anyway, um, Clubhouse is super fun. Zanderman says, we love Evan. <laughs> Back at you, man. Pay ye 10 training, how to be the best version of yourself. Uh, it starts by figuring out your who. Build the serve. Figure out your who. You got to figure out your who. You want to be the best version of yourself, you got to know You got to know who you are. So mine is believe. And then when you break it down, you'll find the three things that make up your who. And whenever you are not happy or you're not feeling like you're the best version of yourself because you are out of alignment with your most important core value, your who. So that's what you have to figure out. Uh, and it, it, the book walks you through some exercises, um, super easy to go through. It may take a little bit of time, it may take a little bit of self-reflection, pondering, um, but it's, I think, one of the most important exercises you can ever do in your life. So let me know, go through it, let me know what you think. Hey, could you please check my page? Uh, you gotta bring value, bring value. You want people to check out, first off, I'm doing a live. So I'm not leaving the live to go check out somebody's page, but learn to bring value. Like this is actually super important. You wanna stand out on social. You want people to check out your page. You know how many times I've checked out Zan Demand's page? Do you know how many times I've checked out Zan Demand's page? A lot, why? Why, because dude shows up. He's always, he's always supportive. Uh, he's always bringing love to the community. He's always showing up. And so when I see that, what do I, what do, I do? I think, man, who's this guy, Zander Man? Look, he just, put, he just put the book reference. Go look at page 31, right? Who's this guy, Zander Man? And I wanna, I wanna go click on his profile to see what he's up to. That's what you need to do. Don't go to people's live streams and say, hey, check out my page. Don't DM people to say, hey, check out my page. People aren't gonna do it. If anything, you're just, um, annoying them. I'm trying to help you. I want to see you win. The strategy you're using is an is a non effective one. What you're teaching people is that when you're messaging them, that they're getting get they're getting annoyed again, that you don't bring value, 
That's not what you want to teach people. What you want to teach people is you bring incredible value. Bring so much value to the community, to them, that then they have to check out your profile. It's like, who's this person who's so amazing in my community? Who's supporting others? Who's, who's, who's cheering me on? Who's asking great questions? Who is this person? Then they go check out your profile. That's what you need to do. Everybody watching, that's what you need to do. Good luck. That's how you stand out. Okay, what else? Uh, can your who be purpose? Um, that's an interesting question. I think everybody has purpose. So, so you'd have to break that down further. What, is that, what does that mean to you? Because uh, everybody wants purpose. So is that your most important core value, purpose? That's what you got to ask yourself. Is purpose my most important core value? Right? Your who is your single most important core value. That when you're, when you're 120 years old, you're still going to care about it. So it could be, but that's the work that you need to do. So every day it should feel more and more right or more and more wrong. Simon, how do you confirm your gut feeling? First, by starting to see, does it come from a positive place or negative? Does your gut feeling come from a positive place or negative? So I was talking to somebody on my team today. And one of the things that, that he uh, is going through is worrying about the future. Worrying about the future. Worrying about the future. Like, I don't know where I'm going to be in 10 years. And future planning can be helpful if it's coming from a positive place of, I want to get this done and get this done and get this done and get this done. If it's coming from, I don't know if I'm going to be secure in 10 years. I don't know where I'm going to be coming from a, a place of lack of fear of insecurity, then, then it's not going to serve you. So same thing for your gut feeling. If you have an emotional reaction to something, you got a gut feeling for something. Is it based off of something positive or negative and leaning in to trust the ones that are positive and uh, be skeptical of the ones that are negative. Because when you are feeling bold, confident, powerful, alive, full of love, you're gonna make the best decisions for you. But when you're feeling negative, low, depressed, angry, sad, you're probably not gonna make the best decisions for you. So that's where um, listening to your emotions, listening to your gut can either be the greatest thing in the world or the worst. I'm a big believer in that when you feel bold, powerful, confident, excited, love, and you decide on something, that's actually the best decision for you. And then your brain talks you down from doing it and keeps you small and keeps you safe and tells you that you can't do it anymore. So just, how are you feeling right now? Do a check. You feeling great, you feeling powerful, or are you feeling small and less than? That's how to know if you should trust your gut feeling and emotions or not question though good question i like it okay what else we got uh who do you idolize or name a few uh i idolize the best evan carmichael you know like my goal and your goal shouldn't be to be somebody else it's to be the best version of you and so i want to i want to meet 120 year old evan and and shake his hand and have him say you did it you know you lived up to your potential you did what you could that's the goal. That's who, if I idolize somebody, that's who I idolize. Now, I've had a lot of mentors growing up. My parents, chief among them, right? Those are my parents. It's me when I'm eight or nine. I've got AP Giannini and, and Steve Jobs, and we've got Howard Schultz and Kanye West back there. And everybody that I featured on my channel, on all my channels, are mentors of mine in some way. But idolize? Nah. Nobody is my idol except future me, potential me, best me. That's my idol. Taking advantage of our loyalty, what to do? Uh, well, you've allowed it to happen. So they're not taking advantage. You've allowed it to happen. You haven't set up any barriers. You haven't set any standards for how to treat you. You haven't, you haven't set that up. So this is not on them. It's on you. First off, right? Stop getting to the blame game of like, this is a bad person. This person took advantage of me. No, you've allowed that to happen. 
you, you've created the environment, the low standards, the lack of rules for that to happen. And that creates uh, power for you because you could change it. You can change that. You can create new standards for yourself. You can set boundaries for yourself. Um, and the second thing would be, they're probably not a bad person. Uh, they're probably just in a lot of pain. They're probably struggling, suffering, right? Like haters, they're not bad people. They're just struggling. They're in a lot of pain. So what you need to do is remove the emotion from the situation. You feel hurt, but they haven't hurt you. They haven't hurt you. They've hurt themselves and you've allowed people to walk over your boundaries. So if you take the emotion out of it, it allows you to have a much better response, one that you're proud of, one that this is a great lesson for you that you're not gonna allow it to happen again because you've grown from it and you have new standards for yourself. What do you do when you feel so low? Serve, you know, the service is the cure all. That's why we wrote, or we, me, I wrote, built to serve. Service is a cure. If you're not happy, it's because you're not serving. Everybody, every human, you want to wake up and you want to feel like today matters. You want to feel like if you're writing a book, you're writing an email, you're making website content, you're making a video, you're creating a product or service, you want to feel like today matters, that it's going to mean something to somebody else. Everybody wants to feel like that. You want to wake up and feel like today is going to mean something to somebody, that you're going to have an impact somehow. Maybe on the world, some big, big thing that you're going to do, or maybe just touching one life. So if you're not happy, it's because you're not serving. So find a way to serve. And there's always a way to serve. There's always a way to help somebody. There's always a way to reach out. There's so many people who are in pain, who are struggling, who are suffering, who have no hope, no belief, no confidence, and just... A, a, a cheer from you, a hug from you, a word of a compliment from you could be the difference between them having a great day or a bad day. So you're, you're one action away from having a great day. You're one action away from getting out of feeling so low by focusing on serving. If you woke up every day and felt like today doesn't matter, and that was every day, that was a lot of days in a row. Like today doesn't matter. You know what? And today doesn't matter too. And, and today doesn't matter either. That's your, your pattern you're on the path to depression. That's where most people are. You wake up, you drive to a job that you hate, and you feel like it doesn't matter, that nobody cares. That's how you, that's how you dive into depression. We are social animals. We are wired to serve. It's hardwired into you. But you can flip it at any point by trying to help somebody. You could do just an act of kindness, which is great, which might help. Um, I keep referencing Built to Serve, but a lot of these answers are, are in here. Why I wrote this is because it helps you figure out how you can serve in a way that's really core to you, in a way that you'll love doing for the rest of your life. But just understand that if you're feeling low right now, it feels like it's because you don't feel like you matter to anybody. And first off, hey, you matter to us, you're here, thank you. Thank you for your presence, thank you for your question. Welcome aboard. And at any point, you can choose to be a, a source of light for somebody else. And when you are that, when you are a source of light for somebody, when you're encouraging somebody, when you cheer somebody on, when you give them a little bit of moral support, it's impossible to feel the, 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 the joy and happiness of that and feel low at the same time. So the path out is service. Make sense? Good questions. Chocolate Johnny, what a name. Are you on Clubhouse? I am, I don't use Clubhouse that much. Um, you can look me up, Evan Carmichael. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity. I don't like audio, audio is the worst for me. So I'm not, um, as of yet, going hardcore on Clubhouse. I think, it's, I think it's so strong right now and so hot right now that um, it makes sense to be on. If you're if you're in a podcast or the audio world, you have to be on. It, it, it might eat your business. If I have a podcast and I'm not on Clubhouse, I worry about losing traction on my podcast. It's it is the big thing in audio right now. If you look at audio, uh, Clubhouse is the place you need to be. If you look at video, YouTube is the place you need to be. 
And if you look at written Twitter, I guess there hasn't been a new one in the written space for a while. How do people communicate? Written, audio, video, right? Those are the three ways. And there's always this ebb and flow between the right platforms to look at. But audio has to be Clubhouse right now. Fastest way to grow. Video has to be YouTube. And written, I'd say Twitter. It's short, but medium is dead. I mean, you can still blog on your own channel, but there's nothing new. I mean, that, that's ripe for the next, next invention, next social media uh, app. When's the written word going to get some love? So Twitter. What else? What would you tell your younger self? There's only one answer to this question. It's your who. Back to build to serve. <laughs> I should just put in the link, put, put it like a pin comment or something, build to serve. Um, the only answer is your, your who, your most important core value. So mine is believe. So what would I tell uh, my younger self? Believe. Believe more. Believe more in myself. Believe that you're going to make it. Believe that it will work out. Believe. And I used to hate this question because I get asked this question. This is probably one of the most uh, common questions that I get asked on interviews and shows like this. Um, and I don't, I don't mind answering the question. Why, why I didn't like the question was because it's not practical. Because I can't do it. Because I can't talk to my 18-year-old self or my younger self. I can't go back. So I, I spend zero time thinking about it. I spend zero time on what I could have done uh, and how many mistakes I made. Zero time living in the past. I'm, I'm 85% present, 15% future, and 0% past. Uh, but why this question became possible, uh, interesting, actionable is because 120 year old Evan coming back to today, it'd be the same answer. 120 year old Evan is telling 2021 Evan believe whatever you would tell your younger self is the same message you need right now. That's why it's so practical applicable, actionable right now to make this year better for you. Whatever you would tell your younger self is the exact same message that you need right now. This is fun. I love you guys. All right. Nina, how long before Android Clubhouse comes out so we can join the club too? I have no idea. I don't, I don't have uh, inside access to the Clubhouse executive team to know. I know it's a pretty skinny team. Um, they don't have a lot of they don't have a lot of teams. There's a lot of features they're working on. I, th I think they'll be working on other features, or at least from what I've heard. Um, uh, features like the ability to record, uh, other features like that before they go Android. So if, you, if you're really super hot about getting on it, just get an old iPhone or get an old iPad. It's not that hard. If you really want to be on Clubhouse, get an old iPad, get an old iPhone, and you can get in and do it and play around and see if, if you are in the audio business and you are not on clubhouse you are making a major mistake you might lose your podcast podcast listenership is going to go down because of clubhouse youtube isn't threatened um but podcasts are for sure tips for writing a book so I can speak from nonfiction experience, right? I've written a, a bunch of books, but they're all nonfiction. So when I'm writing something, it's like every second question, we talk about Built to Serve. It's a good book, guys. You should get it. Um, what I start, so when I'm thinking about writing a book, I start with what's the main theme? And then I go to the main section. So for this one, it's who, why, how, and then like, those are the three steps who, why, how, and then how to make money off of it. Because I didn't want people to just find their purpose, but then not know how to turn into a business. Because then you're just living for the evenings and weekends, and you never get to actually execute your purpose. You have to learn how to make money from it too. So who, why, how. So built to serve, right? Humans are built to serve. Main theme. Who, why, how, how to make money from it. The four main sections of the book. And then I'll break it down into different chapters. What are the main chapters under each book, under each section? And then I can start writing the chapters. I find it really hard to, when I'm actually writing the page, 
to remember the whole thing. Like I'm either thinking up here, big picture, or I'm, or I'm down in the mud in the micro working on the actual thing. And so I, I plan that way down. Big theme, the main sections, the chapters, and then page by page by page. I don't think that works as well for fiction. Um, you might be able to plan the whole thing out for fiction. I don't know. I, I've never written a fiction book, so I couldn't tell you. But uh, for nonfiction, I think it works super well. And it's based off the way to write a book quickly is to know what you're talking about. Built to Serve is really a function of me having done so many different coaching sessions that it popped out because I, I'm basically just writing the things that I've been saying and saying and saying and saying and saying and saying and saying. Um, yeah, one other thing would be I, I would pick one day per week to start writing. I think writing... Uh, at least for me, writing for half an hour in the morning, I got nothing done. Because it took me half an hour just to remember what I was doing yesterday from where I finished writing. I need, I need a day. I need whole days at a time to write. So I would, I would take one day per week, go to the Whole Foods Cafe, and just write. And it took me 30, 40 minutes just to remember where I left off from last week, and then I just stayed there and got giant chunks of time done. Um, I wrote a third of this book, a third of this book in two days when I was driving to New York. We drove to New York and back. I had, a, I had my neck was broken, so I couldn't, I couldn't fly. I wasn't allowed to fly with a broken neck and I wasn't allowed to drive either. So Nina, my wife, drove me and uh, it was like eight and a half hours one way, eight and a half hours back. And in those 17 hours, I wrote the whole last section of this book, chunks of time. For any kind of creative project, you need chunks of time. All right, what else? What else? Tess in the house, mover makers, welcome aboard. Should you, do, should you do a live to share your message with a guest or someone to coach? Both can work. I think it depends on what you want to be known for. If you want to be a coach, then do coaching. If you want to make money as a coach, and I want to see you coaching. If you want to make money as a interviewer then i want to see you doing interviewing right they're not mutually exclusive you could do both but if you want to be a coach i would much rather have you go coaching five times a week if you're only making content once a week then great do an interview as a second part of it so it ultimately stands like what is your goal what is your ambition what do you want to get out there what do you want to be known for what do you want to get paid to do and then you break down the steps. So I want to get paid to be a speaker, then I need to see you speaking. I want to get paid to be a coach, then I need to see you coaching. I want to get paid to be a host, I need to see you hosting. What do you want to get paid to do at the top? That's going to have the impact, yes. Reach people, yes, and make you money. And then show me the process of you doing it. We got a love test. What's your next biggest plan? Uh, I can't share it yet can't share it yet working on two uh exciting projects two exciting projects that are that are coming soon on top of the usual youtube videos are still going you know closing in on three million subscribers all that kind of stuff but uh yeah two exciting projects and stay tuned stay tuned it's coming what do you think about digital marketing as a high income skill i like it i'd be more specific I think digital marketing itself is too broad. Uh, get really, 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 really good at something. You know, you look at um, Jeremy, who I invested into, who took, I took him from being a, a stock boy at a grocery store earning minimum wage to, you know, inside of a year having a six figure business because he became known as the YouTube guy, YouTube consultant, YouTube expertise. So within digital marketing, what are you gonna be great at? You're gonna be great at, but look, we, we've been talking about Clubhouse a little bit. Being a clubhouse moderator, being a great clubhouse moderator is now a job. People are hiring clubhouse moderators. That didn't exist a month ago. So digital marketing is too broad. What, what inside of digital marketing do you wanna play in? And picking something ideally that's growing that you have a, 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 an affinity for, right? Could you make money as a medium consultant? Sure, but medium is not really used that much. Could you make money as a Facebook uh, organic reach person? Sure, but Facebook organic reach kind of sucks. 
So, you know, picking the right platform that you care about and then being an expert at it, going deep with it. Then you get paid. Uh, what else? Let's get to, wow, we're almost at time. Let's get to one more. What if they don't respect the boundaries that you set up? Then you're not respecting them. If you set up boundaries and somebody walks all over them, you have still allowed that to happen. <coughs> been talking too much today. You've allowed that to happen. They're not really boundaries. You need to set up strong boundaries. It's like saying that you're going to go to bed at, at midnight every night, but then you stay up. Like you've allowed that to happen. It's not that somebody else kept you up. You decided to watch that extra Netflix show. You decided to get on that call with that person. You decided to stay up late. You decided to cheat on your diet. You decided to have that extra conversation. You decided to take that call. You've let that happen. It's not about them. Like the whole point with this is from the initial question and then from this follow up, you're blaming them. It's you. It's you. It's your fault. You've allowed it to happen. The boundaries weren't strong enough. You caved. Take the responsibility. When you take that responsibility and you set up real boundaries for yourself, when you've decided, right, the, des the decision to do something is means cutting off other things. You've decided this is happening, period. When you do that, your entire life changes. Guys, I got to run. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the break. Thank you for the break. It was fun. As always, um, I'm back to mentoring day. Tonight, if you guys want to ask more questions, Zan, the man, Smith, and Drew Hitchcock and I are going live 6 p.m. Eastern. So that's in three and a half hours on my gaming channel, evancarmichael.live. And come ask your questions. Um, Zan, the man, will make sure that your question will get answered. And can't wait to see you. Continue to believe, guys. Have a great start.